Howdy, friends. Mama and Papa here, back for another exciting ride. Yeah, hop aboard. We like to have fun as we help people get where they want to go. And we love entertaining folks with our stories. Yeah, my favorite part's when we share our adventures, especially when we're going to places our riders have recommended to us. Yeah, and I love connecting with our new friends as we share ideas and give advice. Yeah, it's almost like we get to be their surrogate grandparents. And hey, who couldn't use some extra family? Right, so climb aboard. Let us help you get where you're going. Time to explore with Mama and Papa. <laughs> yeah, today we got rained out. We couldn't go to the park we planned to. But we found this cool place in Independence, Midwest Genealogy Center. Yep. We're going to go find out if we're related. <laughs> Come with us. All right, you might notice, first of all, that we're in a different vehicle. Yep. Our car's in the shop, so we're in a rental for a couple weeks. Yeah. But it's a nice little car. Yeah. Okay. Before we leave Crown Center, we wanted to wrap up our whole Explorer section. Yes, we had such a good time today. Mm -hmm. Started off today researching our genealogy. Genealogy, yep. That was uh, interesting. Ancestry. Yes. Yes. And then, and we, then we tried several times going to a restaurant. <laughs> we tried to eat at the Russell. Which we said we were going to. But they had a water main break, they said. Yeah. So Gates was right next door. I thought, why not barbecue? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. We're in Kansas City. Yep. Gates is a classic Kansas City restaurant. Mm-hmm. Not gluten-friendly, apparently. Wasn't any options. No. So, they, they we looked eat. on our map and found a place called Unforked that was on our list. Mm-hmm. In Crown Center. In Crown Center, just down the street. Yep. So we, so we head that way. Got up here, and it was... Uh, it was interesting. It was... Unforked is a pretty cool concept. Yeah. All their meals supposedly can be eaten with no silverware. Right. So they had like really tacos, cool. quesadillas, right. sandwiches, things like that. Unfortunately, they've got some wild options. options. So it was going to take Mama some major leaps and bounds to try some of these things. Yeah, you got to be in the right mood. Yeah, I really do. You just got to know Mama on food, it's, I'm picky. <laughs> By the time we'd already gotten here, we were already hangry. Yep. So we were like, Ugh. Let's and not then, try that. Then while we're sitting there. We mm -hmm. have the, the smells wafting to us a from barbecue. the Burnt Ends Barbecue. Yes, Burnt Ends so Barbecue. So we, we had our mouths mm -hmm. right set for barbecue already. Mm -hmm. So we were like, let's just go to the barbecue place. Yep. Don't have to try something new that way. Yep, and, and all their sauces were gluten-free. Mm -hmm. Everything I had was gluten-free. They even brought out um, the french fries and bread on a separate plate. So the gluten-free stuff didn't even come right. near but my stuff. Oh Great service. Oh, the service was excellent, and the burnt ends were just fabulous. It was good food. They were really good. Yeah. Yep. We'll definitely go back there. So if you're in town, and you get an opportunity, check out Burnt Ends Barbecue in Crown Center. Yep. Great and, place. And then if you want to... Yeah, then when we left, we weren't done yet. <gasps> oh, that's right. We passed by the chocolate factory. Yes. And there was a, there was a fellow actually doing his... Uh, Mixing the mixing fudge. Mixing the fudge, and then so, we got gluten-free chocolate and sugar-free. Mine's sugar-free. Yep, if I ever want to go keto again, might have an option here. Yeah, so excited. So, and, we, and we learned a lot on our ancestry stuff, too. Yeah. That was really fun. This is a great day of exploration for us around sure Kansas City. It was. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad to share it with you. Yeah. Story time. Story time with Mama. Story time. Story time with Mama and Papa. It's story time. I'll play along. What are we going to talk about today, Papa? Remember, we were going to tell everybody about the sin that just happened this weekend. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That I had was no exciting. idea. Exciting. Yeah. We picked up several rides, either two going or coming from. Or the, both. Or both, yeah. <laughs> we're picking up workers from. Yeah, the very first one was a worker. He was working on, he was in charge of putting up all the tents, right? Yeah, that was just south of, <clears throat> oh, maybe we should back up and tell everybody what the send is. Oh, yeah, don't good know. point. Um, apparently, I think they're partnered with the International House of Prayer, mm -hmm. according to some of our writers. Right. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And it's apparently this big event that happened in Kansas City. This year was on Saturday, May 14th. Yep. I've looked on their website. I, I can't really ascertain if it's a year an annually thing or right. if it's going to be at a different location at another time this year it was at arrowhead stadium right and they had over sixty thousand people sign up yeah so from 10 a.m in the morning till 10 p.m at night there was over sixty thousand people worshiping the lord right 
That was pretty cool. It was neat because you could almost, you could feel the Holy Spirit yeah, just, covering Kansas City. I mean, it, it was, was it was a really neat deal. If, if you noticed that this weekend, probably had a lot to do with it. Yeah, and and every ride was just amazing that night. Oh, yeah. I mean. The people were amazing. We, yep. We were, we were being blessed and ministered to. We, mm -hmm. I hope we were ministering to some of them. Yep. It was a. Uh, it's very powerful. Yeah. And it made us look into this International House of Prayer. Right. If you don't know, this it's this thing. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. We'll include links below. But the general idea is that these people, back in 1998, decided that they wanted to have uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, continuous prayer and worship for the Lord. Yeah. And apparently they've, they've set this organization up, and they have a prayer room on their website that is... It's set up in 12-hour shifts, and they break it down into two-hour shifts in each 12-hour shift. Mm -hmm. But you can you can watch this thing online, this prayer room, for free. But apparently this has been going on since 1999, nonstop. Didn't even know about it. So, yeah, 23 years. That's pretty cool. It's a, it's a neat concept. So, We're going to look into trying to attend next year. Yeah. It comes back. Yeah, the sin thing. Yeah. The sin uh it just seemed like a super powerful event. Yeah. The people were awesome. We picked up uh, uh, the first guy, starting mm -hmm. with... So Friday night <clears throat> of this weekend, we picked up a guy along the side of the road <laughs> <laughs> down south of the stadium. Right. South of the city, Belton area, for those of you in the Kansas City area. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we, uh, we get a call, and we accept the ride, and we go down to pick it up, and... There's all these kids all over the place. Oh, right, yeah. And we're, we're thinking... Everywhere. Must, yeah, we're thinking maybe it's a graduation just happened or... Yeah, something uh, like that. Some kind of party or something crazy is going on, but they're just walking along the, the highway. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that don't know, it's like an outer road along the highway in Belton area that you have to go down, and if, if you miss your location, you got to go all the way around, right. back down the other outer road, and then back down around... So we're being very careful, and the guy's got his locator on. Right. So we're we're kind of following him, but he keeps moving around. Yeah. But he's in this. We finally get to this general area where we're supposed to pick him up. Right. And they've got like cones set up, and they're directing people away. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I, I finally just ignored everybody and said, I'm going to get this guy. His locator is like right there. Right. So I, I whip in between the cones, and I sit there, and there's kids walking by. Nobody's indicating that they're looking for a ride right and then i watched this locator come from behind us passing right by us and it's and i'm watching walking right next to us are two guys yeah i didn't pay attention to anything they're just talking yeah and i can't remember the guy's name uh that actually ordered the ride it was like mark or something let's yeah. just say it's mark yeah I'll say and i saw so the ride we're looking for the rider we're looking for is mark and there's these two guys passing by and i said mark and they turned around and said oh yeah are you the uber yeah, we're right here, we're ready to take you. And so it was the other guy that was with him that gets in. Right. And then um, he tells, I mean, it's obvious he's been working all day. Yeah. He's he was, sweaty and, he was so and uh, hot, looked like thing. he was worn out. Yeah. And he said he's been in charge of setting up these tents. Mm -hmm. And then we realized, oh, there's all these, there's an event going on. Like, it's dark by the time we pick him up, so we didn't right. notice. Okay. But there's like all these big tents set up right in the field, right off the, this outer road. Yeah. And he said it was for this big event that uh, somehow is associated with the International House of Prayer. Now, I'd heard of the International House of Prayer. Right. We've dropped people off from near there, and we've seen the building. Mm -hmm. And so I was always curious what it was, so I just asked him. And yeah. That's, he's the one that first told us that that's what this organization does, and that he's been involved with them. And his story was really cool. He, oh, my goodness. Yeah. He grew up until he was like in third grade, I think he said, in a truck. Yeah. So his family, like him and a brother and his mom and dad, his dad was a trucker, and they just went with him all the way through until he was in third grade. Yeah. And uh, so anyways, he uh, he talked to us about his life and about how he had come to know the Lord. And Yeah. Man, his testimony was amazing. Yeah. He had some awesome stories. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. He told us some miraculous things he's seen that yeah. are very incredible, and it's a... Uh, it was a blessing to get to meet him. And, oh, yeah, and visit him with him. Yeah. I enjoyed talking with him. And then we, we prayed for him before he got out, and we all prayed yeah, together. Yeah, that was really that was neat. neat. I liked doing that. So, yeah, that was, that was was that's how we started out this 
you know, with that's our first contact. And he, he's the one that told us there's a big event going on this weekend. And yeah. It was called The Send. And so um, then the next day, on Saturday, was the day that the event actually happened from 10 right. to 10. At Saturday, May 14th at Arrowhead Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got another name now, but I refuse to say it. It's Arrowhead Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, these guys, uh, we picked up a, a couple and a, and a young man. A, a, and their son. Their son. Mm-hmm. And gave them a ride from the International House of Prayer mm-hmm. to the stadium. They had tickets and everything. And they were telling us more about this whole thing and, and they told us their little testimony of the yeah. journey getting to oh the, yeah that's, to the, that's uh, pretty cool man that was an amazing testimony and we had enjoyed visiting with them too yeah i mean getting to talk about the lord when you're riding with them oh, that's just fun <laughs> do you remember what they were what they had said about they came from colorado mm-hmm. and the couple they do uh they, they said they brew kombucha yeah in a commercial kitchen and, and bottle it and sell it yeah back in colorado yeah. yeah it's pretty cool yeah but they had driven out here and their their car had been stolen yeah the like they had so many right before obst- they were they'd already bought their out. tickets and, yeah they had obstacles obstacles yeah. to overcome so they came out in a they had somebody basically sold them a, a truck yeah really cheap because they needed some kind of transportation they were they were wanting to get out here yeah and they just on a, you know, trusted the Lord, and right? Went. And this old beater truck, the three yeah. of them drove across. Just, I mean, we're talking about just a regular cab pickup. Yeah. Only a, you know, like a bench seat. Yeah. Three people. Mm-hmm. And she said they uh, they had to pull over several times because it got so hot. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's when the weather would change. Yeah, of course we have hot weather then. Right. The hottest it felt like. <laughs> yeah. So they uh, essentially they were leaving their truck at the International House of Prayer and Ubering to the stadium. Yeah. They were a, a joy. They were yeah. a joy to visit with. So it's, it's pretty pretty neat testimony that they were able to overcome all these obstacles. It's like uh, the devil was putting all kinds of obstacles in their way so they yep. couldn't come to this event. And they still made it. Right. So yeah. they were the first ones we took to the stadium. Yeah. And they yeah. were. Uh, they were stoked about going. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they were, and they were getting us excited. And as oh we, yeah. As we get there and we see, we were realize we thought that fri- after Friday night we thought the event was happening at that. Yeah, with the tents. With the tents were yeah, in Belton. Yeah, yeah. We didn't realize it was... There the, when we start looking at the direction, I'm like, wait a minute, are you going... Are, do you mean to be going to Arrowhead Stadium? Or did yeah. you mess something up? Like, no, that's where the event is. Yeah. I was like, oh, so, I mean, Arrowhead Stadium is like at least 75,000 seat stadium. Oh, yeah, easy. So, I'm like, oh, so maybe that guy last night was right about the number of registrations. Uh, he was saying that he had heard the registrations were over 60,000. Yeah. And uh, we thought, well, those tents are, man, they're going to be they're busy over be, here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> How are they going to do that? Turns yeah. out it was at the stadium. Yeah, and that they, was pretty cool. They, uh, they also had a, uh, so there are all kinds of people all around there. They got RVs parked down in one corner of, over by Royal Stadium, which is right, in, it shares the same big parking lot area. Yeah, it's, it's sick. And we picked, up, we picked up a lady there. Yeah, as soon as we dropped off that couple and their son, right. our very next ride was to pick up. Uh, a lady in the same, or the parking lot, right next to where we dropped off. Right. A uh, lady in a red dress. <laughs> yeah, she told us, she was in, in her notes that she was in a yeah. red dress. And man, she was a hoot too. She got to have a VIP um, uh, stay at the, one of the, what do you call them, the clubhouse VIP room. Mm-hmm. She said it was the first time she's ever done that, so that was pretty neat for her. And She was a neat lady. Yeah, she was. We actually swapped information yeah. um, to keep in contact because she's a... Uh, she was uh, pretty um, inspired by what we yeah, do. Yeah, she made us feel good. Yeah, she did. She said she'd like to duplicate us. <laughs> yeah. She, well, she said clone. <laughs> yeah, she wants clone, to clone us. us. She wants to clone us. But so. then she explained what she meant, which yeah. is a neat idea. Yeah. Go ahead and tell so them. she was telling us, and she gave us some numbers that we never thought of or heard of, and um, it's kind of sad, but there's over 250,000 in just America. Right. There's over 250,000 children that are orphans because of COVID. Right. And um, we have, were telling her, you know, about all these kids that get in our back seat. They'll just start opening up to us and visiting with us and telling us all their heartbreaking stories. And um, and you know, and before they get out of the car, they're like, "Man, I don't, I don't know why I opened up to you." But or I've they, never said that to anybody. Yeah, I've never said that, like that to anybody. That before, yeah, but thank you for being there mm. to listen. And she's like, "Man, that would be an amazing thing to offer kids." 
popular, who've been ill through by COVID, is free rides with the grandma and grandpa that will listen to them. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, wouldn't that be amazing? It would be cool if we could start something like that and take it nationwide is what she was saying. Yeah. Because she was from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And she, she either had either her son or a friend of hers has a, has a podcast um, that's religious. I can't remember exactly the details on that, but she was wanting to hook us up and do an interview with them as well. You remember? Link us. Yeah, link, us, link together. us together to do a swapping of an interview. Yeah. So that would be cool, too, to get more public publicity about Catch a Ride with Mama and Papa. Yeah, and uh, I mean, if we could inspire uh, little us's. Yeah, all over the United <laughs> and, States. And cities all over the United States that are going out there and ministering to, to these Children. kids they're picking up. Yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? That would be awesome. Oh, I would love that. And if we could somehow get, get it to where mm. somebody's... Uh, I mean, it, I, I didn't even think about it until she's... But now my head is going crazy with these ideas. Like, right. what if we could, like, get people to donate and, and fund these uh, little pockets all over the country that, like, uh, just like she said, we'll give free rides from school to school events or yeah. after-school events by a couple of grandparents who they can hopefully open, open up, up to... and trust and... In, in, in right, at least unload on. Yeah, you know? if anything. I mean, it's... Just having someone to listen to sometimes is means everything, you like, know. It seems like it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and those kids, ninety nine percent chance we'll never see them again. Which is the whole reason we started this podcast, right? Because we wanted to be able to, to be available, connect, and yeah, connect, to with connect with people, with stay them. connected. But just being able to be there for them though is just it's a really really good feeling. feeling. Yeah. It really is. So yeah, this whole I mean, meeting her was just phenomenal. It's it just, sparked so it, many. It got a, yeah. So many ideas now that we have or wanting to do with this ministry, which is basically what it's become. This, yeah, let's just say it. This podcast yeah, this has become, become a ministry. It started out as just a way to entertain folks, tell them our stories. Right. But our stories naturally. Always revolve around God <laughs> yeah. or evolve to God. Right. I mean, he's One way or the other, that's how it ends up being. Yeah. So, I mean, we did, um, what, I think there's three um, with the send. And then after that, I don't think we had any more. I th- yeah, I think actually once we dropped that lady off at the airport, uh-huh. I think we did. Uh, you're right. I don't think we had another. We didn't have any more. Which going is strange. We kind of assumed we'd be going back, back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. But uh. But then every ride was still. Pretty yeah, I mean, like cool. I said, the Holy Spirit was definitely at work in oh, Kansas yeah. City, and uh, so we we kept picking people up and talking about the Lord. Yeah. And by the end of the weekend. Almost every ride, let me interrupt you, but almost every ride, God was mentioned in one way, shape, or form. It was, yeah, it was amazing that how much... It was pretty weird. I mean, it's, it's not by it's, us. It happens regularly in, in our true. rides, but it's amazing how, how much it happened yeah. this weekend. It was that, almost every ride. Yeah, that our rider would point. mention yeah. the Lord. Even if it was just a, oh, thank you, Lord, for, you know, something little that just happened to him or, you know... It seemed deeper than that. I mean, like, well, most of them were. Most, yeah. most of the rides, you know, somebody would just out of the blue say something about how they were a Christian and yeah, or had <laughs> questions about something, and we could minister to each other. And, yeah, or or would ask us questions right out. Yeah, it's 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 cra- I mean, like I said, that happens pretty regularly for us. But as much as it happened this weekend was pretty incredible. Yeah, it was. It was really incredible. Definitely, something was in the air. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Um, man, what other. Any other ones that really... Well, that's the biggest thing is the, the whole idea of how the Holy Spirit was definitely at work in Kansas City. Oh, yeah. I, I attribute it to that sin thing. Oh, definitely, 100%. And, uh, I mean, like I was going to say, it culminated in a, a pretty big deal for us that happened yes. on Sunday night. But let's let's save that till next week. Okay. This, this oh, man, big. that's a pretty good story, though. Yeah. Ah, okay, we'll save it for next week. Come back and see us next week. We're going to tell you all about it. The amazing ride that we had. Sunday night. It just topped it all off. Yeah. So, today on the questions and answers segment, we are going to discuss some Uber tips whether for um, using it as an Uber rider. Right. From a perspective of the Uber driver. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully we can help shed some light on ways to make your rides a little easier whether we're there or not. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I think one of the, some, first I'll start with some tips. Okay. Okay. And then I have a safety information I want to go over too. Yeah. This is something we share with all of our young ladies. Yes. Every time we get security features. Yep. Um, so let's start with some tips. So one of the, one of the biggest tips I think is very helpful is when you guys use the locator 
No, oh, yeah, turn your locator on. There's a lot of times we'll, the Uber app will be telling us that your house is on the right side of the street, mm -hmm. but your locator. your locator is clearly on the left. Right. If that locator is not on, there's lots of times the Uber app has told us the house is on the right. We pull into the driveway. Right. And a lot of times on the on the screen on our screen it says near one two three Main Street. Right. We'll pull into one two three Main Street, but they're at two twelve Main Street. Yeah. And they'll come up from behind us yeah. in the left. <laughs> right. <laughs> Inevitably. No, yeah, they'll come up behind. We're looking, we're just waiting outside that person's door, and then all of a sudden there's a guy standing there that came from across the street. Yeah. And we're like, um, okay. Yeah. I know some people don't, they just seem to like drop a pin. Mm -hmm. And it's close enough, I'll find, we'll find each other, no big deal. Right. But if you're in a hurry, you know, that's just one thing that can help you yeah. find each other quicker without yeah. having, and then I have to wait on it. There's a lot of features on the Uber app that I know you're aware of, but you may not necessarily regularly use. Right. Um, let's see, another good tip. Um, um, oh, have your light on. Right. Make yes. sure we can see your house number. Yeah, that's very helpful too. It's Some hard folks, to see at if night. You, right. If you use Uber regularly and mm -hmm. you plan to use it at night, you might go out there someday, go out on the street and just look at your, and, and be honest, could I really see that if I didn't have any idea right. where this neighborhood is? Where this address. Right. Yeah. So that usually helps. And if you're the type that likes to stand outside and wait, which those are that's always nice yeah, too, if the weather is when permitting. When they wave at you as you come up. That's yeah, having your perfect. light on your phone. Yeah. And is another way to, you know, wave down your We've your, had people do rider. that in the middle of a parking lot. Have, yeah, it's really. hundred people around. Oh, yeah. And, and it's, we're like, oh, it must oh, be that, that guy. That's our dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another really nice tip. Um, <clears throat> Communication. Yes. Yeah. Again, so we, this isn't a huge deal, but if if you're in a hurry or you need to make sure that you communicate something, yes, send a message. Send a message. Um, we always send personalized messages to every writer. One, letting them know who we are, um, so they're not surprised that we're a couple. You know, doing this as a team for right. one, but also to introduce ourselves. Um, and uh, but um, communicating back, like you know. We're the third house on the right, or we have we're the house with the red door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a little information like that is always helpful for the Uber drivers as well. Yeah. So that's always There's, nice. Some of it seems like common sense, but um, for us, for our generation. Yeah. But the your, little things just. Your really generation is more lot. technologically advanced, so it's kind of, you know, maybe not relying on the technology as much. Right. As just some common tips and tricks to. Yeah. To connect with each other. Yeah. Oh, read the messages. No. Oh, yes. If we, if we <laughs> doesn't do any good if we're communicating and and you're not even looking for the message. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times we'll, uh, for instance, we're we're on the way to get you and, and we just sent you a message saying, hey, we're 12 minutes out, and then we come up on a wreck or something. We always like to. I mean, that's part of the benefit of having Mama sitting next to me as I'm driving. I don't have to worry about it. She can message. Yeah. While say, I'm hey. driving, and she'll. Give, keep you informed and let you know, hey, we're... We come know, up on something. Right. We're in, there's a delay. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So at least you know, and you're not... Uh, we've had several times where something like that has happened, and the person's been like, man, I thought you'd be here five minutes ago. And we're like, well, didn't you get our message? Yeah. And, and inevitably, they're like, oh, well, I, I did get something. Let me see here. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So we've got kids. <laughs> our our 23-year-old son. Yeah. Doesn't read just messages. swipes right past a message. Yes, he inevitably. Does. So we know what it's like. If you really need him to know something, you're going to send it five or six times. So. Right. <laughs> but still. That so that's the thing. That's the key piece of the communication part. Nothing yeah. else matters as long as we're, we're keeping in communication with each other. Yeah. And if it's us that's coming after you, we love a phone call. It seems some people are hesitant mm -hmm. about calling us, but. We don't mind it. We, we, in fact, we love it. Yeah. If you're calling, we know that we're going to be able to find each other. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, yeah, don't hesitate to call us. And I think most Uber drivers would probably appreciate it, too. Yeah, I wouldn't see why not. Right. The more the help, the better. You know? Right. Less stressful for us, the more information we have. And we don't have to measure. We don't, all you got to do is push one button when the incoming call comes in. Yeah. So. So it's a simple process. Right. So now, I think safety. Yeah. Okay, so this is something I like to tell all the girls um, that get in our car, especially if they get in there by, ourself, by themselves. Mm -hmm. So Uber has um, several safety features, first of all, when you're riding by yourself. One of which, um, first of all, there's a little blue icon on the bottom right hand, bottom left-hand corner of your app. And in that little um, 
in that little section of that of that um, app, you can, one thing that's really cool is you can send a link to anybody you want, whether they use Uber or not, so they don't even have to have the Uber app for this work, but they can, they'll get a link and they can watch your ride from the moment you get into your Uber ride to the moment you get out of your Uber ride. And so if they see your Uber ride going off course, they can contact somebody. Um, and I think that's a really neat safety thing to have. When we were in Buffalo, New York, um, I sent, I had to take a Uber a couple of times and I sent that link to our daughter in Kansas city here in Kansas city. And that just gave me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that there was somebody else out there who knew exactly where I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? We had one writer tell us one young lady that mom was telling about this. Mm -hmm. She said she'd actually used it and it had come in handy. Yeah. And the person that she had, uh, watching her ride. Because she didn't know, for one, she didn't know where... Where she was. Where so she, she was. didn't know if she, she didn't know was if taking she was on the ride. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. But the friend that she had sent that link to messaged her and said, he's way off course, I don't know what's going on. And so they bailed out at the next... She and the lady she was with bailed out at the next stop. Yeah, and so it was really a... Uber saber. did refund her money for yeah. that ride and got her another ride. So, I mean, it's better safe than sorry. Right, right. There's a bunch of weirdos out there, even weirder than us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But another feature that, say you're already in the ride now and something's going on that just makes you uncomfortable, whatever the situation may be, also in that little blue um, icon, um, there's a section in there that you can record your ride. Mm. So, um, and the Uber driver does not know about any, yeah, any of these. Any of these, yeah. You can use all of those features and the Uber driver is not alerted in any way. So, um, that's another really neat neat right. feature to have is you can you know record your, your ride um now this is something that um uber doesn't provide but it's another good tip for um, young ladies having someone on the phone with you yes <clears throat> is another really neat safety feature we've noticed several young ladies do that it's mm -hmm. very smart yeah yeah i like that idea mm -hmm. so but and and we'll put links um below um to the section that um goes over the safety features of the, in, Uber. in Uber, yeah. Because I'm sure there's more that I haven't even discovered yet. Right, these are just a few things that mm -hmm. we've learned, and like, like we said, Mama's actually used that one feature. Yeah, where well, you send the link. Why don't yeah. you tell them? That's a fun story. Why don't you tell them why? You, why? Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, our daughter suggested that we do it, right. and I'm really glad that we I did because it was like my second Uber ride ever first of all and i don't know if any of y'all have ever seen the tv show dexter well if you haven't i'll give you a slight little information dexter is a serial killer and he's he, a good serial killer though. yeah of course he, he only kills still, only bad guys only he, other serial killers yeah yeah but he has usually. A, usually but he has a method that he covers his kill room he calls it in plastic everything it's a because he also does uh blood analysis so he's like he's a like, forensic yeah. technician of some kind yeah. on the police force so the plastic covers up all the evidence basically right right so whenever he has a kill room it's just covered in plastic okay so now you know about dexter i get this ride pulls up and my daughter said check the license plate that's another safety thing and i did that so i knew the vehicle was the right vehicle according to the uber app and i asked the gentleman are you my uber driver and he just nods I'm like, oh, okay. Creepy. I'm not going to say already. anything. Yeah, kind of already creepy. So I go to get in, and I felt like I was in a rolling kill room. Not even kidding. I had, there was plastic on the seats, on everywhere. Plastic between, you know, a shower curtain between us. I mean, there was just plastic everywhere. It was so, so creepy. And then he didn't speak the entire ride. I mean, it was the creepiest ride ever. And then he drops us off, and he was actually taking us to get our orange um, caliber. Right. The one that we used to Uber in. And so he dropped, there's only one way in and out uh, where we bought our car. And he, he drops us, drops me off. I'm alone, keep in mind. Drops me off, turns around, and he, he exits and goes, you know, down the road. Well, I take quite a few minutes looking over the new car and, you know, taking pictures and posting on Facebook. Look what I got. So excited, you know. And so I probably spent a good five, maybe ten minutes, you know, just playing around before I even got in the car and left. So then I get in the car and I leave and I drive down the only way out and a little bit down the road, there he is. He's pulled over on, again. on the side of the road, I know. And then he pulls out behind me and he follows me for a good five minutes. Oh my goodness, I was It's probably freaking, a coincidence. It probably was, but it's I was still, freaking yeah. out. It was really creepy. It was creepy, creepy. Super duper creepy. 
But I was super glad that my daughter had that link and knew exactly where I was because I didn't know where I was. I That's would have true. never known if he had gone the wrong way. But it, on on our daughter's side, was she able to like see where? Yeah. That's the way I understand it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, she, your person watching, can watch the route that yeah the, the route Uber that is Uber's, recommending, mm -hmm. and if the they, driver take exactly. So, so yep, yeah, I was happy for that feature. Yep. Yeah. So, I hope we're able to share some um, helpful information for y'all. Yeah. Keep you safe, and, and maybe your Uber rides will smooth the ride. Well, sorry, folks. Ride's coming to an end. Yeah, that's all the time we got for today. But mm -hmm. before we go, let's talk about where next week's ride is going. That's right. Oh, we got rained out of the Meadow... Meadowbrook Park in, in Prairie Village, Kansas. Yep, so we're going to try attempt that again. That should be fun. We're going to take you guys along. Yes. And we're going to go to a restaurant that we came across that looks really interesting. It's, I don't know if, if we, have we mentioned how much Mama loves bears? I love bears. This one has a big statue of a bear outside, so we're going to go So we got to go. And it's called the Black Bear, right? I think it is. Black, Black Bear. Black Bear. So, I mean, we'll you tell you all about it. That. Yeah. And of course, we'll have more stories of our adventures. Mm -hmm. And we'll have another question that we tackle. Yep. Next week. Until then, uh... Please watch some of these, some of our other videos. Yeah. Uh, connect with us. Uh, you can connect with us on Facebook, Facebook YouTube. You, you can, yeah, on the, whatever platform you're on, you can comment. We love to hear the comments. We love oh, to yes. read your comments. Uh, we're getting more emails than anything, but and that's messages. great. And, and personal messages on Facebook, which is great. We that's love awesome. all of that. We do. We anyway, love you connect with us. Yeah. Bottom line is connect, 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 connect. and in person. Oh, yes. Don't forget, church. Yep. Every our, Sunday. Our church is down Information in the description below. below. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about our open mic night. Yep. Every first, first Friday. Friday. And Next one be... is June 3rd. Yep. June 3rd. So hope to see you there. Yep. And until then, we'll see you next Thursday when you can catch a ride with Mama and Papa. We'll be there to pick you up.